Yes. Okay. So, Elon, I just, uh, this is John from Tesla Owner Silicon Valley. I just want to personally thank you for spending your precious time to be here at the X Takeover with this audience. On behalf of Tesla Owner Silicon Valley, thank you for coming. Uh, you're welcome. So, we just want to, um, I guess, let's just dive right into it. But can you share just a little bit about any really just, um, hold on, sorry. <laughs> I was just like, so I think one, one thing, obviously, we know in the next week or two, Starship 5 is going to be happening. What's top of mind? What does success look like for you? Well, it's probably not, from a standpoint of when Starship would be ready, it's probably, probably is about two or three weeks, but uh, then, then depends on when we get the FAA license. So uh, it's probably end of August is my guess, earliest, um, and it may go to early September. Just depends on, on how fast the FAA grants our license. And for you, what does success look like? I know there's the idea of literally um, using the chopsticks to capture this. Is is that still the goal? Is that is that what success would look like, or what um, what is success for you and SpaceX in this next Starship Five launch? Well, the, we would like to catch the mecha, the, the booster in the giant Mechazilla arms, which isn't sounds kind of insane. Um, and uh, because this is the, the this is the largest flying object ever made, so to catch it with uh, you know giant robot arms is um, you know pluck it out of the sky is is pretty insane. But I think it's it's got a decent chance of working. Uh, might take a, take a few kicks at the can before it's actually <laughs> before it works well. Um, but it's a, we're not breaking physics, so success is one of the possible outcomes here. Um, so we do want to try to. Recover the booster. We were, on the last flight, we were able to achieve a soft landing in the ocean or the the Gulf um, in the water, and the, the yeah, that's cool. Um, so I think people may have seen the real time video um, all the way down to the to the splashdown. Um, and then the other thing we're uh, hoping to achieve is obviously a more robust uh, heat shield. So um, you know, last time we the, the ship actually did make it to. Um, to the, the Pacific Ocean, or kind of like the border of the Indian and the Pacific Ocean, and uh, it did light the engines, and actually the ship did achieve a soft landing. But the, we lost a lot of heat shield tiles, and um, it's, it's kind of amazing that the ship uh, did did make it to a soft water landing, and that it it made it all the way. To, it also splashed down because of lost tiles, and I mean we basically had like two like snaps. <laughs> control with like little skeleton hands um but it, it managed to make it but it, it it didn't it didn't get to um a per, the, the exact right location so uh because it lost the control authority it was about i think six miles or so off uh of course from its landing location so this time obviously we want the the heat shield to survive uh, intact um and the flaps to have full control authority and uh land at a not not just land softly in in the ocean, but but land at the exact right location. Um, the, the the ship uh, landing is the tough part, uh, meaning like that's because the ship has a heat shield and it's really designed to survive entry, not not to um, sort of vaporize. <laughs> um, it comes down very much intact, and so we need to make sure that for the ship um, that the reliability of the heat shield. Is extremely high, and that the, the flaps uh, that and that it can steer to a very precise landing location, um, because if it were to break up of a you know populated area, there's some possibility of debris hitting, um, you know, damaging property or, or, or people, and so we want to be really confident that the ship um, heat shield is super robust and lands at the exact right location. Um, so before we try to bring the ship back to the launch site, we'll probably I think we want to have at least three uh, successful landings of the ship. Um, at, you know, and the, the, the ship heat shield this time is substantially upgraded. Uh, I'd say it's at least twice as good. Well, in some cases like infinitely better, um, and has a secondary uh, heat shield behind the primary heat shield. So, uh, you know, it's probably a longer explanation than maybe you're looking for, but um, that's what we're hoping to achieve. Is um, yeah, I think we got probably a 50% chance ish of catching the booster, and then probably probably better than 50%, maybe 60 
70% chance of the ship uh, heat shield remaining intact on this upcoming flight, assuming nothing else goes wrong. So one thing I did want to comment is actually the X takeovers, actually, you're, you're coming through Starlink right now. So all the work oh, cool. that SpaceX is doing, uh, it's all through Starlink. <laughs> well, it's, it's Starlink here, too. It's, it's Starlink and Starlink. <laughs> Starlink connecting Starlink. Yeah, I'm, t I'm testing the Starlink Mini as well. So I'm like alternating between the, the main Starlink dish and the Starlink Mini dish. Um, now, to be clear, the Starlink Mini dish is not as good as the regular dish because it's a smaller antenna. It's, a, it's not as much uh, antenna area as the as the regular dish. Um, so, just to be clear, like the Starlink Mini is not exactly the same as the other one, but but just smaller. <laughs> Backpack size. <laughs> it's it's yeah. It's it's like you you give up a little bit of uh, antenna area for, uh, but it's it's extremely portable. So it's like I don't know, maybe a quarter of the weight of the regular one, but and, and and you'll get about half the bandwidth. So it's 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 sort of it's power to weight. It's like ability to weight ratio is is quite is really good. It's um, and then yeah, you can just put in a backpack, take it anywhere you want. Uh, I think it'd be pretty pretty good as a sort of a backup device for emergency services. Um, so um, actually, a, a lot of sort of first responders and emergency services are you know looking at having that as just. Um, just because it's so easy to just put on a vehicle. In fact, I know people have put it on Teslas, which is pretty cool. Um, they're like, we have cyber trucks here with them, literally stationed on them. Te shout out to Tesla Tino and some of the other ones. Yeah, but I think like the Sonic, the Sonic Mini, especially is because it's so portable and, and easy to, to put in places. Uh, it's just great for uh, emergency services or if there's like, you know, forest fires, floods, natural disasters, um, which take out, you know, where you lose the ground fiber and you lose the uh, cell towers, then you still have uh, access to the internet with the Starlink. We're in the market for a Starlink Mini, so two thumbs up, good reviews. How do you like it so far? Uh, it's good. Um, you know, it, it's it's a new product, so we're we're always like like ironing out little little things here and there. Um, but uh, so far, so good. It's looking good. I think it'll be um, a, a huge seller, and 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 also it 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 costs less to manufacture, so that means the terminal cost. Um, I think much might ultimately get down around a couple hundred bucks, uh, which is makes it accessible to a lot, you know, many many parts of the world where, where um, the more expensive terminal, the more expensive terminal is, is is unaffordable. So this should be affordable for, uh, for, for for you know much of the world. Well, I can't wait to get out to South Padre Island for selfish reasons and have the Starlink Mini to uh, cover this live, uh, but. What's incredible is just the access that Starlink is, is, you can go anywhere in the world and have access. Like the gap for knowledge is no longer going to be an issue in some of the most remote places. So even making it more accessible with Starlink Mini is just insane. Um, quickly back to the Starship 5. So Starship 4 happened, I, um, I, saw, I, I was there live on Isla Blanca Park, it was, and then even uh, going through the Star Factory tour, just what you guys are doing at Starbase is in incredible. And how fast you iterate and make changes on the fly as it's, um, you know, each day that goes by, it feels like a century maybe at other places because of how much you guys are changing. What, you know, outside of the heat shields, what were uh, some of the other big findings from the Starship 4 launch that you guys are implementing for and preparing for uh, for this upcoming launch? Well, this 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 really uh, between each flight, there are hundreds of changes on both the ship and the booster. Um, uh, many of them are, are very sort of small, but they add up, you know, cumulatively to to significant uh, changes. So. Uh, so, so, like, if you add a, changes to the ship, the booster, and to the launch site, you're really talking about thousands of changes between each flight. So, uh, you got really talented teams at SpaceX working on the the stage zero, which is like the uh, the launch site. Um, and stage zero is as, as important as stage one and two. So, you, the stage one being the booster, stage two being the the ship. So, man, it's, it's there's so many. It'll be, it, it, and, and a lot of them would it, people wouldn't. If I got into the details of it, people would be like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Uh, you, you know, because give you a, well, it's gonna be like a, like a little valve here and a, a line change here and a routing a wiring routing change there and a bunch of tweaks to the software and so it's, it's a whole bunch of things that that are not like uh, as easy to describe as upgrading the heat shield um, and um, <laughs> um, there's a 
a, a much more significant change coming um, in a couple of flights from now. Uh, I think it's shift seven uh, where we, we move the, the forward flaps more towards the rear. Um, so this always bugged me as a kind of um, design mistake we made with uh, the ship initially, which is to have the the forward flaps be symmetric with the rear flaps where the, the forward flaps are um, at 180 degrees. Um, and um, and you really actually want the forward flaps to be um, kind of in the lee of the wind. Um, this is, I, 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 I'm cautious about getting into too much technical detail that, that maybe doesn't uh, make sense if you don't know about <laughs> like rock. But, um, uh, steers itself is it's kind of like a skydiver where the flaps are like your the forward flap, that like hand, arms and legs, so it's really different from a plane. Um, it's it's like, um, and then uh, the, the 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 forward flaps you really don't want the forward flaps to be visible to the airflow because the you're really trying desperately to not, to not have the engine side uh, rotate forward and get into the hot plasma. So the, the with I think it's shift seven the the the, the forward flaps get smaller, and they they kind of go they rotate back. I mean they're 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 hinge position instead of being at 180 degrees is like I don't know maybe 150 degrees or so, um, and so um, the the forward flaps are really just used as trim flaps. So that basically in a nutshell they, they, the the flaps get smaller and lighter. The payload improves. Um, and uh, and then then there's continued improvements to the heat shields. Uh, the engines get get better, so we're able to run the engines at higher thrust with more reliability. Um, and then um, a, a really big step change will be maybe in end of next year or something like that, uh, where we get rid of the base heat shield and the ship heat shield uh, the, the, at the engine the engine side heat shield. So the, the engines are do not need to be encapsulated with the, the, the next big revision of the Raptor engine, um, which, which is quite tricky, but, but that, that eliminates a lot of mass at the base of the vehicle and at the base of the ship. But, but, but the base of the ship and the booster both um, get a lot lighter and the engines are more robust. Um, there's a lot of Starship technical detail here, but um, and, and and then also the, the the payload will be comfortably above 100 tons to a useful orbit. Um, so 100 tons to useful orbit with full reusability, um, where the the booster and the ship come back to the launch site, means that the cost per ton to orbit is, I don't know, maybe about 100 times less than it has been in the past. Um, and th th this is what w would enable uh, life to extend beyond Earth. Um, and uh, and and it, to build a self-sustaining city on Mars, which would maximize the probable lifespan of consciousness um, by I don't know, many millennia, if not millions of years. I'm going to pass it over to Kelvin uh, after this. But one thing that's incredible about you, Elon, is how much in the weeds you are. I don't think I've ever seen any leader at any company. Uh, be so involved in the weeds and the fact that you can go as high and as low um, Literally, it's just a, a truly out amazing. So I'm gonna pass it over to, to Kelvin But um, that's just one thing that I've noticed about you is that you're highly involved in everything you're doing um, And you're able to step out bird's eye, but also get into the weeds. Yeah, well, I, I mean I, I drive the engineering and design at the company so it, that that's um, like relatively unusual um, you know, but that's, that's, I mean, that's, I think a big part of why the companies succeed is because I, I understand the engineering and, um, I, I know when somebody, you know, I, I, my judgment on whether somebody is great at engineering or design, um, is, is quite good. Uh, so in terms of, of, of really having the most talented people, um, Giving them the most respons responsibility. If if you if you don't actually understand the engineering, then then how do you know that somebody is a good engineer? Um, so th that is really important. Um, so that's uh, I think 
you know, we're, we're a very talented team, but but in order to know that somebody's talented, you must also understand the uh, engineering. Elon, we're going to shift gears and uh, talk about Tesla. Woo! Sounds good. <laughs> this is the Tesla takeover. <laughs> the now, takeover. The, now the X takeover, <laughs> but we do Tesla takeovers all over the world now. That's cool. Thanks. By the way, guys, I just want to say thanks a lot for your support. It's super appreciated. Thank you. And <laughs> I, um, I know uh, Kelvin's going to follow up with a question, but I just wanted to say thank you uh, from our organization for the support. I'm literally 2018 and got my Tesla, started driving it, and I can't believe the amount of FUD out there on it and fake news, especially even in the Bay Area. And so <laughs> yeah. It's always been that way. You know, it's <laughs> into to getting into this community and, and creating uh, now these epic events. Uh, so, but I'll pass it over to Kelvin. Yeah, Elon. So obviously a lot of Tesla fans here as well as SpaceX, but uh, regarding on the t Tesla side, can you give us any updates on any future models? Obviously, you know, the, the robot well, taxi is coming out. You know, I, I mean, I can't quite, I can't do like product announcements. Uh, At the X know. takeover, just joking. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I think the, the, you know, a lot of what I've said, I, I said on the earnings call, uh, or at least I try, I try to, you know, say what I think on the earnings call. The, the, the overwhelmingly important thing is, is achieving un, unsupervised full self-driving. So Woo! Th this is really profound. And um, hopefully a lot of you have gotten the chance to use 12.5 uh, or at least 12.3.6. Um, so the, you know, the, the, the Tesla AI team, and it, it's, it's a couple hundred, it's, it's not a huge team, it's, it's just a few hundred um, super talented engineers. But I do want to emphasize that it's, uh, you know, it's it's obviously way more than me, and, and but it's also it's more than a show can, and and uh, it's it's like I just I, it's 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 like tough to recognize like 200 people, but I just do want to emphasize that there's that there's well, it's actually a little more than 200 people that 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 are really responsible for the full self-driving uh, software side, and then we've got a great uh, chip design team um, because you need the chip to chip. You know the chip uh, is going to run on something, so the Tesla AI chip, uh, hardware three and hardware four, and then upcoming hardware five, which will probably be in volume production in twenty six. Yeah, twenty six. Um, uh, this this there's really great 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 chip team, um, and um, uh, and then we've we've also got uh, a great uh, a training cluster team. Like it's actually very hard to run a lot to to, to build and run. A large NVIDIA training cluster is is takes a lot of skill and, and a lot of work. Um, so, um, you know, teams cranking twenty four seven on uh, building the the South extension to the uh, Giga factory uh, in Austin. Um, and I was just, I was actually just talking to the team last night, um, making good progress for installing the servers. Um, but uh, but I do it, it's like sometimes people think oh you just buy NVIDIA you know GPUs and plug them in and they start the training run and off you go. Uh, this is not the case That's at all. <laughs> it's super hard, actually. Um, the, in fact, one of the tricky things that uh, is, is kind of interesting with if you've got a, if you've got a large uh, NVIDIA training run or in any kind of like large training run, the power fluctuations are um, unlike anything you ever see anywhere else because the the, the GPU is all running with extreme precision. It's like it's like it's like a a symphony, uh, like this massive symphony with, you know, uh, in, in the case of the installation in at, at, at Giga Texas will be fifty thousand. It's like imagine fifty thousand instruments all moving in symphony, um, and that what that actually causes it's it's like actually a, a extremely difficult, like a nightmare electrically, because when the when the GPUs go up, the power goes up, and the GPUs go down, the power goes down. <laughs> and, and this can happen at like 100 millisecond uh, intervals. So it's, uh, it, it's actually quite a difficult thing electrically. <laughs> um, it sounds like a light show almost. It's quite, kind of like a light show. It's, it's um, the, it, it just, you just uh, get these dramatic changes in, in power draw. Um, 
And so you, you and, and when you got 50 megawatts, uh, that can go from 50 megawatts down to 20 megawatts in 100 milliseconds. It, the, like that's just very unusual. So um, and back up again. <laughs> Um, anyway, so this is, it's it's actually quite challenging. So, so shout out to the, the Tesla team for that is um, you know building and operating the the training center. So it's 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 really it's like quite a few pieces of the puzzle that need to be done. Um, and then we've got to record record a lot of data uh, and and uh, you know and feed that into the training system. But the, the net result is that um, it's it's really starting to become quite compelling. I think uh, with twelve point five. Um, and um, as I mentioned publicly, we've increased the number of parameters by a factor of five. Um, now, it, it, this, one can simply increase parameters. <laughs> one does not simply increase parameters. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's it's uh, if, unless those parameters are useful um, and done in a, in the right way, uh, you, it it's just. It's, 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 it doesn't matter. You actually have to have the parameters be the, the right. Well, each parameter is like a, it's a number, but the numbers have to be correct. Um, and, and you can think of what, um, like, what what the AI is trying to do is effectively compress reality. So it's trying to say like, okay, we're, we're taking all this video in, trying to understand reality, compress it down to, um, you know, a, a few gigabytes really. Um, although also, I think it's going to that's steadily expanding, and it'll probably end up being twenty gigabytes <laughs> soon. But we're trying to compress reality into I don't know a few gigabytes is pretty hard, um, and um, and and because our the, the inference computer in the car is uh, much weaker than say a, a GPU in a server center, it, it's it's only got like uh, maybe uh, fifteen to twenty percent as much power. Um, and um, so, so in order to make, if, if your inference computer is relatively weak, then you, you have to spend actually more effort on the training side in order to, have to make up for the weak inference computer. Anyway, so, um, but it is working. It's, I think it's, it's doing really well. Um, and um, I think we'll, we'll see rap, continued rapid improvements each passing week. Speaking of uh, light shows, Elon, I just want to say thank you for reposting and sharing our light show from X Takeover. Appreciate it. Uh, sure. Uh, so I want to talk about battery technologies. Uh, what advancements are you most excited about in terms of uh, battery technology, and how will they impact the range of um, inefficiencies of future Teslas? Well, the I think it's important to note that even if there were no battery breakthroughs at all, um, I think you could electrify all road transport um, and all all road and transport and all ships could be electrified um, with with even if there were zero improvements in battery technology. This may be an important point to note. Now, there will be improvements in battery technology, but even if there weren't, you could electrify all ground and water transport. Um, for airplanes, you need you do need some improvement in the um, uh, energy density, the gravimetric and volumetric energy density. So you've got a, you ideally want to have about a 450 or 500 watt hours per kilogram uh, uh, energy density, uh, which you can get, I think, in some. It, it's it's all it's getting there. Like it's 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 the, you know, with some expensive cells, they're they're up in that region. Um, but uh, really, most of the um, R and D effort is in is in improving the uh, cost per uh, what per, per kilowatt hour. So the the the, the cost of range improve, Like how do you get improve the cost of the battery pack in order to make the cars more affordable? Um, and um, and then yeah, the you know, from a range standpoint, I think people are coming to expect uh, a range of. Roughly 300 miles, I think, is being kind of normal, uh, maybe a little above 300 miles, uh, and that's if you're assuming that you're going, you know, you're not go, you know, climbing a mountain in cold weather, because as you as you add more load, the range will decrease. On the other hand, if you're going down a mountain, your range will increase. Um, so, you know, so, so, <laughs> um, so you know, I think we're 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 really going to I think starting to see like 
a, a, a nominal EPA range of above 300 miles as being kind of the normal normal standard. Um, and and then just figuring out how to build enough battery packs get, uh, and scale it up. Um, uh, we're making good progress in the Tesla design cell, which is a, a design manufacturer cell, uh, which is a, this is a hard problem. I mean, there are entire companies that that's all they do. Um, but uh, the rate of progress is good. And um, but like I said, no, no major breakthroughs. There's a lot of a lot of work just to say like how many gigawatt hours of cells need to be made every year to really transition the world to a sustainable energy economy. It's actually, you know, hundreds of gigawatt hours per year, ultimately perhaps thousands. Um, and uh, a lot of it will go to stationary storage. So for, um, you know, pairing a wind power with uh, stationary battery packs and solar power with stationary battery packs, um, and just overall improving the efficiency and stability of the grid with with the stationary battery packs. That's that's actually quite a big deal. So, yeah, but overall, th I feel like things are progressing at a good rate. I've been um, again. I'm when you think of a lot of the the OGs that I've met um, over the years who've been following Tesla. I'm, fairly late to the game but it's in it's crazy even since 2018 going from you know being weeks if not days from bankruptcy to how the company has been going from you know ramping to 5000 model 3s into full self driving and the one thing i mean you i always knew that i was driving a a robot at the end of the day um but never did i think i i guess maybe my the you know i was just limited in thinking that we would ever create humanoids in Tesla specifically. And again, yeah. how would you say, you know, as also too, you know, Tesla is an AI robotics company, um, you know, how is that to being in the factories? And you've made comments about how it's happening in the world. Um, and so, you know, how so, is robotics? Well. Yeah. So how um, has robotics humanoids just impacted the valuation view and really the vision for the company? Right. Well, I mean, you, you can think of the, the Tesla cars as essentially robots on four wheels. Um, so, the it's really really profound, and I'd recommend you know get, get just giving demonstrations of the self driving capability to people, um, you know, to friends and family and stuff, uh, because if you, if you take a Model Three or Model Y, I mean, it it's a good looking car, but it it doesn't look like it has like super intelligence you know <laughs> it looks it looks like it's a good looking electric car uh but it doesn't look like it's like i and I, I mean i use the analogy like let's say you had a cat and it looks like a normal cat but actually your cat can talk and jump up and 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 do like a hat and cane dance and do like a musical are you, you know? talking about garfield <laughs> actually like like let's say you let's say you had a sentient cat that could talk and and do and and, and sing and dance but but people look at the cat on the couch and 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 the cat uh, well, it just looks like a normal cat you know until it jumps up and does a song and dance and it's like whoa whoa like, wow what was what was that um, so so that that's the thing with the the self driving is that yeah sure the Model Three Y they're good looking normal looking cars uh, except uh, ours can basically sing and dance um, and. <laughs> it's intelligent and can drive from one place to another so um so it's just just demonstrating that to people kind of blows their mind um so i'd recommend doing that because that that really that's really key um and then for the optimus robot um that's really an extension of what we've learned with the car so the car is a robot with four wheels intelligent robot with four wheels and optimus is an intelligent robot with arms and legs so but, you know, in the case of um, in, in the case of Optimus, uh, we we have to design uh, every part of the robot from scratch. Uh, the you know all the the motors and gears and um, electronics and sensors uh, all have to be designed from scratch. And uh, also, we have to learn how to how to operate uh, all of these motors and sensors. Um, you really get to learn a lot about how the human body works, and you realize. There's a reason why we we evolved this way, um, you know. There's a reason why the, the 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 muscles that operate your hand are actually located in your forearm. 
um, because you, you actually, you, you, and, and so you're, you know, if you, if you look at your sort of hand, it's sort of like, it's like, it's really, it's like a puppet, basically. Um, and, and the puppet strings are in your forearm. <laughs> and, and the, so, um, I mean, there, there are a small number of muscles that are actually in the hand, but most of the muscles that, that operate your hand are in your forearm. Um, so with, with the current version of Optimus, we, we ha actually have the actuators in the hand, but with the new version that we're moving to later this year, the, the actuators are in the forearm um, and uh, really emulating how a human hand works. So, um, and, and th there, there really are no um, motors and... There's, there are no actuators. When I say actuator, an actuator would be like motor plus gearbox plus power electronics and, and uh, sensors. Um, there are no actuators for, that actually that you can buy for really any any amount of money um, that work well for a humanoid robot. So we have to go, go back to physics first principles and design all of the actuators from scratch. Um, so it's a tremendous amount of work, and I think it'd be very difficult for any, any company that does not have, um, that's not extremely good at designing actuators to, to make a, an effective humanoid robot. Um, and then the, it's, it's, it'll have the same like brain as the car. So initially hardware four and then hardware five in, in 26. And, um, and then just as the car is, the car is learning how to navigate reality, it's, it's the same basic process for the humanoid robot. Um, and I think basically everyone's going to want one. So it's like, who wouldn't want, you know, sort of like, there's no way, there's, there's different ways to think of, of robots, but like, like, let's say R2D2 and C3PO were real and you could have them. Like who would not want R2D2, C, C3PO? That would be awesome. Um, yeah, like a, fr a friendly buddy robot. Now we need to make sure they stay friendly, of course. That's very important. Um, I but, was looking for a Garfield. Yeah, but 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 you know, it's I, I think it's kind of like people will get pretty attached to their humanoid robots, just like people you know you get attached to C three PO and R two D two. Um, and uh, yeah, I think everyone's going to pretty much want one. And I think long term, the cost of the humanoid robot should be less than the cost of a car because it, it weighs less. There's you know, fewer parts in it. So ultimately, I think, you know, a humanoid robot that is super useful, um, I think long term is, is probably like $20,000 or $25,000. It depends on what a dollar is worth in the future, <laughs> you know, inflation and all. But, um, you know, current, current year dollars, I think, you know, I, I can see reaching a price of twenty twenty five thousand dollars $25,000 for a humanoid robot that would be really useful. You know, that could like... Um, Help you take care of kids, walk the dog, you know, you know, go go get groceries, like whatever you, whatever works, you know. Uh, uh, so, so I think everyone's going to want one. Um, so there's eight billion people on Earth, and I think they're all going to want one. Uh, <laughs> so that's why that's why I think it's probably going to be the biggest thing ever. Uh, Elon, what are you going to use your robot for? <laughs> well, uh, I mean, initially we're you know, so we're starting like production unit one of production design one of, of Optimus, which will will do some basic stuff in the fact in the Tesla factories next year because we want to iron out a lot of you know details. It's, it's just to make sure it's it's useful. Um, and 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 for the first year or so, it's going to require quite a lot of babysitting from engineering, um, and then hopefully. Hopefully, when we get to 2026, it, that that'll be one we, we could sort of sell it to um, sell it outside of the company um, because it, yeah, and and have have be be confident that it'll work reasonably well and respond to voice commands and that kind of thing. So, um, and then you, you'll be able to sort of I think customize how the robot looks as well um, long term. With, because you know you can kind of. Shell or skin the robot however, however you like. So for, for I think there'll be a wide variation, wide variations in how the robots looks, how, you know, how the robot looks, and and you know maybe like some third parties could could do cool things. Just like there's like cool third party um, wraps of the Cybertruck. That's some really creative <laughs> art, I think. Um, 
so the Cybertruck's like, even though it's, it's, it ships as kind of like bare stainless steel, it ends up having some of the most interesting uh, art in terms of how it's wrapped. Um, and so it, it's yeah, really quite unique. And um, actually, I was talking to uh, Pharrell. <laughs> um, he was obviously very creative. And like, I think he has some ideas for you know, doing a Pharrell version of, of an Optimus, for example, which would you know, be cool. <laughs> Pretty, pretty cool to have like different artists come up with different you know versions of uh, Optimus. So, speaking of Cybertruck, I've had a Cybertruck since uh, middle of February, and I'm, uh, you know, I'm so used to FSD. And you probably <laughs> yeah. Know you really, you really want the. I, I totally agree. I'm. I don't know if I could get special access, but either or more importantly for everybody. <laughs> I'm just saying I, I've driven 10,000 miles and it kills my soul to be driving <laughs> the most advanced technology. Sure. And I feel like I'm driving, it's still the most amazing vehicle sure, sure. Tesla's ever made, but any updates on FSD with Cybertruck? Uh, well, it, I think that should be uh, coming out uh, in, in August. So uh, 12.5 so is- wait two weeks. <laughs> yeah, it's at some point, at some point in the next, Two to four-ish weeks. I, um, th 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 oh, it no. should work. I would try. I, I mean, I'm sure. I'm not sure the exact timing because we just have to test it and make sure it works well. Um, so, but 12.5 is where a lot of things come together. Where uh, you've got the, uh, uh, the the high. You know, we, we upgrade the high highway stack to be the latest version. So it's it's uh, it's it's you don't have the old highway stack and the new city stack yet. You know, so. Um, ha having one sort of uh, integrated state-of-the-art stack for highway and city is a big deal. Um, and, uh, you know, like little things like you can wear sunglasses and still <laughs> do the hands-off driving. Um, and, uh, and and then having it work on Cybertruck. Uh, yeah, I mean, a friend of mine <laughs> drove Cybertruck all the way halfway across the country, and he said it was driving him great. It was Driving him crazy that he, he could not turn on FSD because it was. It wasn't <laughs> work. We literally so have uh, people, I think, who drove from Florida, Toronto, in their yeah. cyber trucks. Well, not for, uh, but just coming um, from all over the U.S. And I think uh, that's literally the one thing <laughs> they were just like feeling peasant status, <laughs> even yeah, though yeah. this is the best product that Tesla has uh, made yet. So, um, yeah, it's great. It's a great product. Uh, so yeah, it's, it should be very soon. Um, so, yeah, yeah. Elon, what other uh, future car projects are you most excited about? Is it the Roadster? Is it the Robo Taxi? Can you speak about what you're most excited about? Well, I think in terms of of what will have the biggest impact in the world, it will be the kind of the Robo Taxi, dedicated Robo Taxi. Um, now, of course, uh, all Tesla vehicles are can operate it or will be able to operate as as a Robo Taxi. Um, you know, pretty much all. So, uh, you know, but, but yeah, I think the, the dedicated uh, rover taxi will have the single biggest effect in the world. Um, the semi truck, I think, will will have a very very big effect. The the the, the roadster is uh, you know one of those things that's not like necessary from a utility standpoint, but is super cool. Um, so. Um, you know, I guess a friend of mine, Peter Thiel, is like, you know, he was always like, why, why don't we have flying cars? And I'm like, wait for it. <laughs> it's coming. So I think it'll be super cool. <laughs> is it changed the world? I don't know. But I think like, sometimes you just got to have things that are just cool because that's, it's, just, it's just great to have awesome, awesome you know, things in the world. <laughs> so it, it's kind of cherry on the cake. Um, and um, I think the Roadster demo will be mind blowing. I, it might be the most, it might be the most mind blowing demo of anything ever. Wow! So, quick follow up: When is that happening? <laughs> I don't know if you could share that, but it's all good if if you have to pass on that one. I think next year. Next year, sometime. And that that's that's a you know joint sort of Tesla SpaceX uh, effort. So. It's kind of applying, uh, rock, you know, combining rocket engineering with uh, Tesla EV engineering. Um, Alien technology. To make something 
really special? I heard it can fly a little. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, it'll be something special, and um, yeah, and we'll continue to make you know new products that we haven't talked about at all. So um, there's uh, you know there's there's new things that'll 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 come out. Um, but the, the really ultra profound thing is full self driving. Unto is unsupervised full self driving. That's like the gigantic thing. Um, and then Optimus having an autonomous, useful humanoid robot uh, is an even bigger thing than full self driving. But those are the two things that, like, if you were to look back in history from, you know, fast forward like 20, 30 years or 50 years even, like, what are the things that really were profound? It'll be. Um, unsupervised, a general solution to unsupervised full self-driving um, and a humanoid robot that is uh, truly useful. Um, even 50, 100 years from now, they'll be like, whoa, those are big ones. You have a date on the calendar for the announcement uh, and launch of the cyber, uh, the robo-taxi. What can we expect from that? Well, I can't give it away, you know. We <laughs> gotta, we gotta have some, uh, you know, you don't you don't want to give the show away before the show, you know. Uh, so just I think it'll be cool. just a tease. I think it'll be I think it'll be cool. I think people will be um, pretty excited. Um, and um, yeah, um, it's 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 cool. it's, it's like like it, it's like I do wonder like in, in the actual event itself, will people? How many people will realize how profound it is? What we're going to show, uh, I think uh, some people will understand how profound. Not everyone will, but it will be obvious in hindsight. We've been going 45 minutes. I just want to do a quick time check. Uh, are, do you want to keep going a little bit more? or Because uh, we're so grateful well, for your time. Five, five, yeah, five or ten minutes more. Okay. So, yeah, everyone, uh, thank you, Elon, for your time. Um, one thing I wanted to ask you is, so, you know, we have, uh, you know, obviously the latest uh, vehicle, the Model 3 Performance, or really the Model 3 Highland has been out, the Cybertruck came out. When you think of um, just, obviously, even the future of transportation, um, and obviously that's obviously where Franz comes into play with the design, but how does, when you think of unsupervised FSD, how does that change the way you even approach tackling or building something? like the future of transportation. And again, I know I don't have to throw the design aspect into it, but just when you think of what is next, how does the future of transportation impact that? Well, you know, if, if you're not driving, the, you're really effectively sitting in like a tiny lounge. Um, and then, so, you know, having, say, ha, you know, being entertained with, with being able to watch movies or, or play video games or work. Um, you can, it's really, the, the car just becomes like a tiny mobile lounge. Um, that's, that's what, or you could sleep, you know, whatever you want to do. Um, I mean, you could drink too, I mean, you're not driving. Right? So, <laughs> um, so it's this thing where like, it's like a little mobile lounge. It's, it's not something that you have to be, um, we have to be, you know, if, if, focus your attention on driving all the time. So it's just a, it's a completely different experience. Um, one cool thing I should mention is that that would be, I, th I think, interesting down the road is also for Optimus, um, you know, for people that have lost uh, their limbs, um, the, that, um, that if you take Neuralink, um, basically being able to control, which, which the Neuralink version one telepathy allows you to control elect electronic devices. Um, if somebody's lost their arms or legs or whatever the case, is, and and, and, um, and attaching that and enabling, combining that with a neural link would would give them essentially cybernetic limbs, uh, kind of like Luke. I don't know, like Luke Skywalker and um, Empire Strikes Back. You know, where you got like a, a robot wrist, robot hand. <laughs> um, so I think that could be pretty incredible for people that have lost limbs, being able to have like a cybernetic limb. Um, but, you know, I think that'd be a cool um, sort of uh, com combined effort between Neuralink and Tesla. 
Elon, there's uh, there was some recent news on X about um, some candy announcements or something like that. <laughs> no, I just I don't know what that is. I'm just joking about the candy stuff. Um, so, yeah, I have too much too much on my plate to add candy to it. I think. <laughs> um, so but, fake um, news. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. This is. I mean, it's it's wild how much is happening in the world. I mean. There's stuff happening with SpaceX and Tesla and, and all the advancements in AI, um, a, lot, a lot of advancements in uh, pharma as well. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of interesting, like, kind of miracle drugs coming along. Um, and um, we're, sure, we're certainly headed for, I think, the most interesting future. Um, I think we, you know, there's, we, we, we live in the most interesting of times. Um, and... Um, you know, sometimes it's like easy to sort of like, I don't know, get down about like some day to day event or political stuff or whatever. But in the grand scheme of things, we are living in the most interesting time in, in history. And that's pretty cool. Matt, it's, you know, it's so easy to I, I honestly don't know how you do it on a minute by hourly basis on things that are just lies and things that are being said. Um, but it's so important to have, you know, a positive mindset, especially as those attacks are coming, because if you're just depressed about everything that's just coming at you, it's just so hard to to move forward. And so it takes people like you to um, who are actually being a part of that change rather than just watching it from the sidelines. And so thank you for that. I mean, just it's it's um, one thing um, I'll ask and then I'll, I'll, I'll maybe pass it to uh, Kelvin for one question. So we have a lot of retail investors here. Um, as we know, um, it's actually, okay. I, I just want to say how amazing X is um, and how some of the stuff has even worked in the backgrounds. I remember meeting um, Amy Steffens, who was behind, obviously, um, you know, who her team that she, she worked with to kind of like build a lawsuit, obviously, on the comp plan. I met her on an X Spaces, Twitter Spaces, and we got connected, and she ended up on our podcast, and and next thing I know, she connects with Alexandra uh, Mertz, uh, Tesla Boomer Mama. And hey. seeing all of the work that's happening behind the scenes with what Amy was doing and then what Alexandra was doing on the front facing. Um, but the question I wanted to have is, you know, when you think of retail investors and what it's meant to Tesla, you know, what comes to mind, especially again, all the work that, you know, the community has done, Alexandra, the Amy's of the world, uh, the Tesla community, uh, but what comes to mind when you think of retail investors for Tesla? Well, I love retail investors, I have to say, um, <laughs> um, because uh, you know I think retail investors like or, or like individual investors are like they're they're like making a decision to uh, support the company, and um, and that's super appreciated. Um, so, um, you know, like we, we I think we have the highest retail investor percentage of. Maybe any company, or maybe certainly one of the highest, and um, I think that's really a good thing. Uh, so, um, and and I, you know, like there's going to be sort of ups and downs in the stock price for you know random reasons, um, but I, I do feel confident that the long-term uh, value of the company will be extremely high. Um, the, you know, I I think. Um, you know the best analysis I've seen is like Kathy Wood's company, Ark Invest. Uh, they've been the most the most accurate in the past, and um, and it's just it's the you know the value the value of companies is going to be kind of nutty with, with um, uh, unsupervised full self driving and um, and with Optimus. Uh, it's you know I, it's, I, I sort of wonder ultimately what money what money will even mean in the future. Um, because if you've got robots that, if, if the cost of goods and services are driven to almost nothing, um, I think we will, you know, assuming we, we, it's a positive future, which I think it probably will be, th then we, we're headed for an age of abundance. Um, so, um, you know, I do feel like like maybe that like Tesla's kind of in a phase right now, like similar to what NVIDIA was in before NVIDIA went, NVIDIA stock went bananas. <laughs> Um, and I have to say, like, NVIDIA deserves the valuation they've, they've got. You know, they, 
Um, and Jensen and his team have done an amazing job. Um, and um, but, but it really goes to show like the value of any kind of AI, a, a company that is strong in AI is it, it's just going to be crazy. Um, and it will dwarf the value of, of companies that do not have um, advanced AI. Uh, really will be profoundly different. Um, I mean, I mean, it's the simple sort of product, productivity kind of back of the envelope math for cars is that, you know, typical passenger car is about 10 hours of use a week. It's called it like an hour and a half a day for seven days. So it's about 10 hours. Um, but if it's autonomous, uh, it's, uh, it, could, it could be used 100 hours a week. Um, now, I'm not sure what the average usage would be, but average use might, usage in autonomous mode might be 50 hours. But certainly it could be used 100 hours of 168 hours a week. So that would be a 10x increase in the productivity of the car. But, but it, it costs the same. So if you just do the basic math on that, it's like, okay, now you go from like, I don't know, 20, 25% uh, margins to 90% margins. It's insane. Um, yeah. Um, and then that, you know, for, for cars that are owned by customers, then we'd obviously re revenue share with the, the, the customers. And, and so the owners of the cars, I think, I, I, I like, I'd be, I, I think would earn quite a bit more than the, 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 the least cost or financing cost of the car when it's in autonomous mode. Um, so. Yeah, just it just. But if you just think of asset utilization efficiency, um, and you go from ten hours a week of a car to fifty or a hundred hours a week, and it's the same car, that's just it's it's the biggest explosion in value, um, maybe ever. So. Um... I had a quick follow up, but again, uh, let us know where we can do a time check. But uh, you kind of were just talking about uh, just content and like one question I actually had, it was a follow up kind of a little bit to what you were mentioning and somewhat off topic, but do you see it, um, do you foresee a rise in mechanisms to determine the authenticity of content and the validity of what is being said? Like, I think that's in this future, sure. right? I mean, it's, I see half the time I feel like I turn up YouTube and, you know, they're taking some, your, an interview from you and then you're randomly mentioning Bitcoin and. Oh, man. <laughs> or I've seen interviews um, of us, like people are messaging us from our interview back yeah. in uh, May of 2022 and they're live streaming it like it's happening live. I'm like, wow, I, you know, look different two years ago with longer hair. It's like, but it's you talking and you're randomly, you know, the Bitcoin, you know, reel is going on the bottom. So. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm really, I'm, I'm not going to be promoting uh, crypto. So if, 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 you know, <laughs> it, it, at most in a joking way, uh, but I'm, uh, I, if you see me pumping crypto, it's not me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, so, um, I mean, I do think there's some merit in, you know, Bitcoin and maybe some of the other crypto. And I'm, I sort of have a soft spot for Dogecoin because um, I just like dogs and memes. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I don't know. On the on the X platform, this you know pretty quickly things get community noted, or there's in the replies people say, "Hey, this is not not real." Um, so I think you know I think I don't know we can work to try to have community notes uh, surface faster, um, and also to if if similar videos are are popping up that um, the community note gets appended to any kind of similar video. Um, so, but I, I think it's definitely always it want to be cautious about seeing any, if you, if you see, a, see a sales pitch for crypto, um, I would uh, double check whether that is real. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Elon, um, we want to wrap up with a final question for you, which is uh, what are you most ex excited about regarding Tesla and SpaceX? Well, I think I've basically described it already, but um, the key for SpaceX is to achieve full and rapid reusability of the Starship rocket. This is really the holy grail of, of space technology. No one has ever uh, made a, a fully reusable uh, orbital rocket. So Starship is the first design that is even capable of that. Um, 
that this is an absolutely profound thing because um, a, a fully reusable, rapidly reusable rocket uh, is the difference between um, humanity being a single planet civilization and a multi planet civilization. So that's that's gigantic, and I think we might get there uh, next year. So that that's that's a big deal. And then for Tesla. Wow. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to count the chickens until they're hatched. Um, these are tough chickens, but <laughs> uh, but I, I, I think it's I think it's going to happen next year. And then the a, a general solution to self-driving um, that that is also a, an incredibly profound thing, and that's uh, un, un, you know, unsupervised full self-driving. This is that that looks like it's. If it doesn't happen later this year, uh, it, it seems extremely likely to happen next year. Um, if you just plot the points in the curve of miles between interventions, that number is improving dramatically. So those are really the two Whopper things. And then, as I mentioned, for Tesla, also Optimus. Um, the, the Optimus numbers, are like, they're really just, they're like so mind-blowing that you're like, is this, is this real? Uh, it, but, because I, I actually think the market for humanoid robots is in excess of 10 billion units, like more, more than the number of humans. Because um, people will each want one, and then there'll be others that are involved in industry and stuff. So, uh, you know, if, if they do sell, at, even at volume for $20,000, uh, that's, that's 20 trillion. Um, <laughs> so it's like, I mean, this is bananas numbers, you know. Um, I should, yeah, I should say so. Yeah. Anyway, it's just in, insane numbers. So, so, um, so we should hold on to their stock. I should say, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it's it's just it's just it's just really really nuts. Um, I should say, yeah, two hundred trillion dollars. <laughs> this is just an insane insane number. Um, yeah, twenty twenty thousand dollars times ten billion. So twenty trillion to two hundred two hundred trillion. A lot. It's, it's like bananas numbers. So um, <laughs> that's why I like, I wonder what does money even mean at that point, you know? Uh, so th these things are, like I said, they're, they're so profound that they will be recognized, you know, assuming we do them, uh, we have to actually do them, um, they will be recognized a hundred years from now, maybe a thousand years from now, as, uh, as fundamental milestones in civilization. That's that's the level of significance we're talking about here. So, should be a hell of a couple of years. And thanks for your support, guys. Really super appreciated. If we can, uh, we would love to just get a virtual slash in person. Uh, oh well, I think you literally have a, a standing ovation happening right now. Um, yeah.